Okay, Brian, this is uh, Rob again. Um, this morning I made three very detailed videos talking about throttle and pitch curves, but uh, unfortunately due to this little uh, memory card failing, I lost them all. So uh, I've got a pretty busy morning coming up, so I'm just going to try and do a very quick remake for you and uh, combine all elements into the one video. I actually just did that a minute ago, but uh, the kids started screaming in the house, and uh, so now I'm <laughs> trying version two. Okay. A couple of things I need to uh, explain, and the first one is angle of attack. Angle of attack is the angle in which the rotor blade meets the airflow. And if we use this little toothpick to demonstrate angle of attack, you'll see that there is virtually no pitch there, so I've got zero degrees angle of attack. As I increase the pitch, I've probably got about 20 degrees angle of attack there, positive. And as I reduce the pitch, I've probably got about 20 degrees angle of attack, negative. Now this is really important because this is all about how we generate our lift and how the helicopter flies. When you've got zero angle of attack, you've got zero lift, so you're not producing any lift. As we increase this angle of attack, what's actually happening is the airflow is coming in here and it's being deflected downwards. Now air has mass, it has weight, and because you're pushing a mass of air downwards, you're getting an equal and opposite reaction in the other direction. Okay, so that's causing the uh, helicopter to move up. If we create negative lift, it's causing the helicopter to move down, or if the helicopter's upside down, it'll allow it to fly upside down. Now, just a couple of basic aerodynamic concepts we need to understand because it relates to uh, throttle curves and why, why we have a V-shaped throttle curve. When we increase angle of attack, we have something called a total reaction on the wing. And that total reaction is the force actually occurring on that wing or aerofoil, or, or rotor blade I should say, as a result of deflecting the air. Now you can see what I'm doing is as I'm increasing that angle of attack, that total reaction is moving with the angle of attack. It's always perpendicular to the, um, the rotor blade or the wing. What, and what that's causing are two forces, two distinct forces. If we were to break that up into two components, a vertical component, we call that lift, but we also break it up into a horizontal component, which is called drag. On a normal aircraft, it's called drag. On a helicopter, it's called rotor drag, because it's actually trying to slow the rotors down. So just think of, think of it this way. The greater the angle of attack, the more lift you're going to get, but also the more rotor drag. The only thing that overcomes rotor drag is motor power, the power coming out of the motor. So if we think of a pitch curve, let's say an idle up pitch curve that goes from 0 to 100%, 50% is in the middle, right there. 0 would be there, so minus 10 degrees, 50 is neutral, 100 is positive. Now what's happening in each case, you've got no rotor drag at at zero degrees, which is the 50% pitch curve, you've got lots and lots of rotor drag at the 100% pitch curve, which is plus 10 degrees, and with negative angle of attack, you've still got rotor drag. So at the zero pitch curve, where you've got minus 10 degrees, you've got lots of rotor drag. So you can see, moving this stick, I need more hands here, Moving this stick from, let's see if I can get it all into the video, into the one frame. Okay, so moving this stick from neutral, we move it up, we've got more pitch, we move it back to neutral, we've got zero pitch, we move it down, we've got negative pitch. So that's how our pitch curve is designed to work. Okay, now all I'm doing, Brian, when I tell you to uh, flatten out the pitch curve a little bit, is just reduce the actual amount that the blade is pitching at extreme stick deflection. So instead of maybe being 10 degrees, we'll bring it back to about 6. So that as you move back to the middle, it's still neutral, but then as you move it all the way to the bottom, you've only got perhaps minus 6. So all you're doing is reducing the amount of pitch range. Okay, You're still going to be able to climb nicely, You'll still hover and you'll still be able to descend. You're just reducing the extremes on that. And that's going to give you a bit more fine control in the hover. Obviously, a full 3D pilot um, needs 12 degrees of pitch 
positive and forward, so they're going to set that up accordingly. But we probably don't need that for the style of flying that we're, we're doing at the moment. Okay, now remember what I said about rotor drag? The greater the pitch, the greater the rotor drag. The only thing overcoming that rotor drag is the throttle, the motor. So what we need to do is now understand and have a look at how those throttle and pitch curves work on the radio itself. What I've got here is my uh, Futaba 8FG because it actually has a nicely illuminated screen. Okay, we go to the pitch curve and this is the normal curve. Now, a couple of things I need to explain. As I move the throttle up and down, you can see that bar moving left and right. Okay, can't get it all in frame then. And the other thing to understand is that that central horizontal line represents zero pitch. That's the zero pitch line. Okay, anywhere below that line is a negative pitch, anywhere above that line is a positive pitch. So the whole purpose of setting up your pitch curve is to determine how much negative pitch you've got here, where it goes to neutral, and where it goes to positive pitch, and how much. And you can see that I've actually set this up. Now don't get confused because the Futaba does it a little bit differently. A spectrum goes from 0 to 100%, with 50 being the middle, 0 being maximum negative pitch, and 100 being maximum positive pitch. This Futaba goes from minus 100% to plus 100% with zero being in the middle. So please just, just bear that in mind as I do this demonstration. Um, I did a good demonstration with the spectrum this morning with the light, but uh, as I say, I lost the video, so I apologise. This is just a quick, quick and nasty one. Okay, so with the throttle in the lowest position, this is in normal mode, remember, we've got only about minus three degrees of pitch. Now that's perfect for auto rotation and uh, you don't want any more negative pitch from that because you, you want it just slightly negative to give you a good auto rotation. So I only do my auto rotations in normal. You see as I increase that to about the 50% position I've got it so that it's just got a little bit of positive pitch. So it's only going to start to get off the ground and start to hover. As I move it further up I'm getting more and more positive pitch. What happens with more pitch? You get more lift and you get more rotor drag. Keep remembering rotor drag. More pitch, more rotor drag. Okay, I'll go to uh, one of the idle up curves. Remember we're looking at the pitch here. Now I've got four idle ups or, th or three idle ups on this radio but I'm only actually using two. Okay, just the normal one and the idle up. Okay, I've actually set them all to be exactly the same. Whether it's idle up one idle up 2 or idle up 3, it's actually exactly the same pitch curve. Now with the idle up curve, have a look at the difference between that and the normal curve. There's normal, there's idle up 1. And the only real difference is it allows me to produce much greater negative pitch. So now when the, uh, when the stick is in the middle, the blade is in the middle, when I push the stick all the way down, I'm going to have a significant amount of negative pitch. When I move it back to the middle, it's neutral, and when I move it up, you've got that positive pitch. Okay, So that's what your pitch curve is doing. And as I said, if you're just lowering the, the two endpoints, all you're doing is you're reducing the maximum amount of negative pitch, or you're reducing the maximum amount of positive pitch, okay, which tames down the helicopter. That's all it does. You still have the full capability to fly up and down. You're just taming down the extremities, making it a, a more um, a more manageable aircraft, more manageable helicopter. Okay, let's go to normal and let's go and have a look at the throttle curve now. There's my normal throttle curve. Okay, once again, throttle curve is just a little bit different. Down here is zero throttle, and up here is 100% throttle. And in normal mode, we want well, we want to be able to achieve zero throttle so that the rotors actually stop when we put it on the ground. As I increase power, you'll see that I've got a fairly steep throttle curve initially because I want to get that power up. I want to get some power up at least up to a minimum RPM where I can hover the, uh, the helicopter. So my throttle curve goes zero, 30, 30 is 25% stick position, and then at 50% stick position, I've got 
55% throttle. So it's probably just starting to hover. I've got some good RPM happening there. And I've limited it to no more than about 85% throttle with the stick in the full up position. Okay, let's have a look at the idle up one throttle curve. There's your V-shape. Now remember that as you're moving this stick, two things are happening. Your throttle is changing and your pitch is changing. And remember right in the middle there, we've got zero pitch. So notice at zero pitch, we've got zero rotor drag and that's the point where the throttle can be at its lowest. So I've only got 60% there on the throttle. As we increase the throttle, let's say all the way up, we've got maximum pitch, we've got maximum rotor drag, and that's why we need more power at the uh, the full throttle. Uh, sorry, at the maximum throttle stick up position, and why we also need more power at the maximum throttle stick down position because negative pitch on the blade still gives you rotor drag. You need more power to overcome it. With this radio, I've actually programmed in a few different throttle curves, and uh, you see that's idle up one. Sorry about the beeping. That's just uh, the radio thinking that it's flying. It'll stop in a moment. Now, if I move to idle up two, you'll see I've still got a V-shaped, V-shaped throttle curve, but all the values are slightly higher. So what that means is I'm just going to have a bit more power. <coughs> and if I move to idle up three, it's more power again, and that's what I normally fly on. So it's a it's an 85, 90, 95 throttle curve. Okay, hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Um, what your throttle curve is doing is attempting to try and maintain a steady RPM when you're in idle up mode. Thanks for watching.